Hi everybody, here we are back with the blue guitar today and i um, going to show some things that uh, are upcoming regarding plate tuning and carving. So first I'm going to show you um, this layout move. So this is a template that I made um, that's going to let us see the part of the guitar that we're not going to cut at all. And this would be our gluing surface. Now, um, here I've, I've uh, allowed room for the tail block to glue to a flat surface here. Um, but when we look at the neck joint area, the neck block area, I mean, we can see that there isn't a, a place for the neck block to land. And that's, that's a design choice that I made a long time ago. Um, and we're going to fully explore this. But the idea right now is that we're going to carve this guitar, although it will have a cutaway, um, we're going to carve it as if it didn't have a cutaway. And that's going to make it uh, easier for me to tune the plate and figure out what its physical characteristics are. That is, when it's all in one piece. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it'll get thinned here. And then the way that we get around this is... Um, to make the sides and the block get thicker um, where the plates uh, are shaped here. So I think you can see um, that the cutaway area of the guitar is significantly wider than the areas that are not cutaway. Okay? And so uh, so we just grow the block and the sides to touch this um, carved surface. And that way, when we carve the top, it could be good for a, a non-cutaway guitar, a right-handed cutaway guitar, or even a left-handed cutaway guitar, depending on how you want it to configure it. Um, if anybody wants to order a left-handed guitar, let me know. No problem. Anyhow, uh, we'll go into that, as I said, and, and I'll explain my thinking, and, and we'll talk about how that works. And it's not a particularly easy thing to do, but I think it has a lot of value, and I think it helps uh, make a better cutaway guitar. All right, so now we have um, marked out all this, the gluing surface on the plate here, and we're going to return to carving. But first, I wanted to just say that we have some other, some other things coming um, as a result of doing this all by hand. Now, I know you're all familiar with the gouges. This would be the, the roughing tool that we use to uh, move the most material, and that's been fully explained and explored. And then the next gear is this spoke shave, which I modified a long time ago, and, and we're going to do a series of uh, tool making um, videos that, that show exactly how this part with a, f a flat bottom and a crude throat opening becomes this part with a curved bottom. Uh, abbreviated handles uh, for convenience and with um, a nice uh, controlled throat opening. So that's coming. And then uh, last but definitely not least is our next gear is this plane which I designed um, to uh, to take a very fine cut. And these these shavings are about Oh, I don't know, two thousandths. And it can take more than that. It can take probably a five thousandths shaving or something like that. But um, you can see that the tool works really beautifully and it leaves 
a terrific surface. Really a better surface than you could get with a scraper even. Um, okay, so, I mean, this is just really, that's a fantastic surface. I will submit that the regular planes that you can buy for this job from e either violin making planes or uh, arch top guitar making planes, uh, none of them comes even close to doing the kind of precision work that this tool can do and the surface that it can leave. So part of the secret, if there's a secret, of this kind of tool is that the, the shape of the tool is pretty close to the final shape that we want. All right, so we're not, we're not scooping it with, with a tool that is uh, wildly curved compared to the surface that we're, that we're going for. And, and so I'll show you how to make uh, something like this and what, what that does, how that project started was with this antique um, Stanley tool, kind of a cool thing, that was designed to take um, the labels off of wooden crates so that you could, you could, uh, I haven't, I'm not gonna push on this. <laughs> I don't know how this is set. But anyway, um, this is an antique tool that you can get on eBay for short money. And we'll show you how to tune this up and get it to work pretty much as well as, as this guy can work. Before we leave this, promise to, to show you how to make all these, these cool carving tools, let me just say that the difference between these tools and, and the other tools you can buy is that the blade is very wide. It's a 50 millimeters-ish or two inches wide, and it, it gives you a, a way to make a beautiful surface and, and cut uh, in a way that that leaves the that leaves the surface close to what you'll you'll want to have when you're all done. So that's really a, a good thing to have. All right. So for the meantime, just uh, continue with this with this part and working down to these little um, marks that we've made with the the Stradivari stabbing tool. But actually, let's go look at that tool again, and we're going to remark the plate since we're pretty close to those marks here. We're going to have a, um, a new look at this tool. This marking tool that, that we showed you last time um, is working great, um, but I had a couple of folks comment that it looks like it would be a great candidate for a foot pedal. So, <laughs> so I added a foot pedal, which is a, you know, simple, just a, a stick and a string, really. And then there's a spring in here that, that we put in, uh, in order to return, return the lever and get it out of the way for marking. So you can still hear the, sound. So that's nice. We know when we're down. Um, now this is set for, I don't know, 5.7 millimeters right now. So why don't we, why don't we set it for about a millimeter less and see how that works for us. Okay. I'll just check that. Okay, so that's a little over four and a half millimeters. All right. And now we can make marks. It's way easier. <laughs> Thanks, readers, viewers, for, for this suggestion. And, uh, Seems like it's working quite well. It's important to try and um, keep the plate normal to this surface. In other words, you wouldn't want to 
hold it this way when the you know the surface is curving that way. So um, maybe a little visualization is what we're doing. I'm trying to remember the outside curve that we have. Okay, well, that looks like enough guidance. So, and of course we can see where the, the marks are, look larger than their, we know they're deeper, of course, because the end of this marking device has a, a square tapered point on it. Kind of like the point of a nail. Uh, and the end of the point is slightly dull, so we don't want to get the we don't want the wood to think we're trying to split it. Okay, so now we get back with the spoke shave. Now, I know that a lot of people use the, the violin maker's planes, but I think you can see that really this is a whole different animal. Um, there's violin maker's planes, and then there's also planes made by a few companies that are specifically designed to address the needs of archtop guitar makers. Um, and I think
I think that these these tools that I'm showing you work uh, demonstrably better. So we're getting a lot of material off at once. Um, we're leaving a, a darn good surface uh, without a lot of lumps or tear out. Still kind of a roughing operation. But we're uh, making short work of uh, reducing the thickness of the plate. You can see that the tool, you don't have to use the tool going straight. In fact, often it's a big advantage to tilt the tool and have a skew cut, get a better cut, better quality cut. And then also, um, it doesn't tear as much because the blade is angling um, so-called downhill. Of course, there's a place where it turns around, like here, for example, <laughs> and it's kind of tough to figure out exactly how to cut that, but take it, take it easy. Um, where it turns around, you want to make sure you're not too aggressive. And it is tearing a little bit in here, but we are material safe, as we can see from the little marks we made. Oh. Thank you. 
I'm looking for the last few marks. Maybe a little bit bigger cut than that. So this is um, this tool use uses a spoke shaved blade, so we can adjust each side. See how this is doing a really nice job of cleaning up the marks from the bigger tool. So again, on this this part of the guitar where the the wood is sloping down, uh, it's it's a good thing to rotate the tool a little bit this way. And um, I'll point out that one of the reasons that works so well on this tool is that the bottom of the tool is spherical, or very nearly so. Um, and that means that no matter which direction you, you can rotate it quite a lot, um, and it will take the same shape shaving. No matter, same, same size and shape. No matter how you rotate it.
here rotating in the other direction, and cut downhill in this area. Okay. And of course it doesn't need to be used across the grain. You can use it along the grain where it's convenient. Like this. But of course we have to be careful now about um, tearing out. We just have to make sure we stop short of, um, of that area where that'll happen. Okay. So here we see already it's turning around there. We have to be a little careful. And in this case, being careful means going back to cutting across the grain. There's really nothing like it. It's a thing of beauty. All right. Back to mark making. Or maybe I'll just go back to my old technique for a minute and have a look at what I've got. So we can see the extra thickness here around the edge. Uh, <laughs> pretty, huh? No surprises. All right, so let's try the, um, the measuring gizmo here. Just Still quite heavy, which makes me wonder whether I'm um, stomping on the foot pedal hard enough. So I thought, oh, I still see marks here now that I have a different light. You know, light is really a big deal. You see me always moving them around and turning them off. <laughs> Still pretty heavy. So we're looking here, at, you know, over seven here, and then there's six. So it's sort of like this. 
right now. So thickest spot here, kind of where we want it. Normally you want the thickest spot sort of like this, near where the bridge is. And then graduating thinner towards the edges. And the thinnest part normally is right in here. So here's the inside of the lining where the top glues. And then the, the thinnest part is right next to that in a shallow area around the perimeter of the guitar. When that helps tremendously with um, low end response, that flexibility around the edge. It's super important as we uh, talked about before in the um, modeling uh, video. That's the surround of the speaker, so to speak. So I'm going to go back and make some more stabbing marks. So we shouldn't, this is 44 here, it shouldn't touch at all, which it doesn't. And then it should touch here because it's, we've got it set for about 4.5 millimeters. So that kind of is checking out. We could try this method as well. See, if, see how that works. Use it as a contour scriber. I probably could get into some trouble, but maybe not so bad. <laughs> Again, I'm new here. Forgive me. I have a great photograph of the inside of a Stradivari violin that has jillions of little marks. Did I show you? I don't think I showed you yet. Well, we'll, we'll dig that image out and give you a look at it. So there's so many marks, very, very close together. Of course, today, a lot of people will use a drill press for this same, this same job. Um, and that's okay. It's an okay way to do it. Um, but in my opinion, it spoils the fun of carving because you don't have a nice piece of wood to carve anymore. You have a piece of wood that's perforated with these big ugly holes. So I guess before when I was marking, again, I'm still learning here, when I was marking, I wasn't pressing hard enough to make the, that sound. <laughs> um, and so it was marked conservatively and that's fine, of course. Of course, the scary part about this job would be inadvertently making something thinner than you wanted, which there isn't much really, there isn't much of a way to recover from that. So, as we get closer to the thickness that we want, 
we slow down. So as to not make that mistake. Okay, I think we've got the marks we need. <laughs> 